I buy all my electronics based on how they are packed. Of course, that does make it a little bit harder to get into. But in the end, it's worth it to get well-packed electronics in the mail. Honestly, I think they pack it that well just to protect the package delivery guy. Jeez, that's a brick. Very densely packed. Good thing it's solid metal. Well, it's not solid. I mean, there's radio stuff in there. You get mounting gear, programming cable, 12 volt DC power, and then you get this 120 volt AC. And it says it puts out 15 volts at 10 amps. So it'll run off of either 12 volts or 24 volts or 15 volts right there in the manual. But it specifies operating voltage is 15 volts DC. So we'll test it out on both and see if it puts out different power with different power input. But you know me, the first thing I'm gonna do is take it apart. So I feel like this thing is heavy, so I gotta share it with you how heavy it is. Almost eight pounds, seven pounds, 15 ounces. There, eight pounds, big boy. We got some tools and we got something that we need to take apart. And I guess we'll take apart the top side first. Looks like it's a top and bottom and middle kind of design. There we go, that's a better fit. I think they figured out their intended audience for this pretty well. If you're gonna be overlanding and need to set up a repeater, then you're gonna want something big like this. Nice and tight, big and beefy, because it's gonna get knocked around in the back of your truck. What I would like to see is a screen protector if they're gonna do that. Recess the buttons in the screen, because now, even though it's got this really strong case, it's gonna be pretty easy to scratch that up. That looks like there's a, yeah, there's a plastic film on that. So my fingernail just put a couple of dents in it. I don't know if you guys can see that. But we got a couple of dents in there. That'll come out and that feels like it's some kind of glass. Okay, screws are done. I'm gonna be aware that this front buttons are gonna be attached. Oh, they're not attached. Okay, cool. Okay, so that, even if that does break, you're not breaking your LCD there. All right, so we've got our RF board here. That's probably our final transistor, I would, I would imagine, because of the, the heat sinking. Big old heat sink in the case there, ribbon cable to go out. That's your microphone port on that side, so that's probably your microphone port there. That's the, the header where that plugs into. Your buttons, some other stuff there. All right, let's turn her over. One more side to go. What am I resting on when I do that? Oh, resting on the screen, nice. Nice rubber gasket around, including going around the screws too. That's really nice. Put that on to protect the screen. And there are some rubber feet back here. That was eight hex screws out. Kind of exhausting, I need some more coffee. Let's see what's on the bottom side. Ah, that's what I was expecting to see. This is why you'll see GMRS repeaters and 70 centimeter repeaters. And this one is from 462 to 467. But we're gonna be able to open this up and turn it into, because we're hams, legally actually, turn it into a 70 centimeter repeater. I think there's gonna be enough range on this. And this is J-I-E-S-A-I? J-E-S-A-I? I'm not sure, but this is a duplexer and what this does is it keeps your low side frequency separated from your high side frequency so that you can use one antenna with two frequencies transmit and receive and you're not going to be transmitting and then receiving into the radio system the frequency that you're transmitting blowing up the front end you're actually going to filter out the receive signal and it's actually a lot easier to do that on gmrs and 70 centimeters with a five megahertz offset. They're already farther, they're already pretty far apart to begin with than it is to do on two meters. Two meters has a 600 kilohertz, 0 0.6 megahertz separation. And so bigger frequencies, tighter separation, larger cavities. This cavity probably won't work for two meters unless you were to spread it out a little bit farther. We've got a relay there. We've got our antenna there. We've got our control cable there. Our RF goes in and out of that side. So this back side is just the duplexer. And then we have the coax input into the antenna, the high side and the low side, your high frequency and your low frequency. And it's tuned for 462.625 on the low side and the high side is 467.625. In the essence of saving y'all some time, I'm gonna refer you over to the MSI guys video where he actually took the RF board out and goes over what's on that board. He's a lot smarter than I am. I think you'll actually benefit from giving him a subscribe as well while you're over there. That'll be down in the description below for 
for you. But I want to save you all some time and we got a lot of stuff to cover in this video and it's actually going to be a series of videos on what all you can do with this repeater and hacking it and making it work with Raspberry Pis and making an off-grid go box and all that kind of stuff. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel to get notified when those future videos come out. We're set up with the power brick the repeater, a power meter, and a dummy load. And it is my understanding that this thing does not have an on-off switch. You control on-off by plugging power in. So let's get power applied to it. The arrow on the power goes to the back side of the radio. That's weird. Yep, straight on the second you plug it in. Very interesting power connection. And we're on 462.55 with a tone and 467.55 for receive. So the first thing I gotta do is figure out what the tone is. Scan channel, function set, system set. And those are all of your options there. System set, init option, door to init. No, it's not. And no, I don't wanna do that. Software version, version 0.2. Okay, so it didn't actually do the init. It would have rebooted. I guess we have to wait for it to time out to get back. There we go. Back into menu. Function set. Backlight. Low TP. I don't want to read a manual. Audio set. Modem set. Interesting. Yep. Let's see what's in audio set since we're in here looking at everything. Audio set 5. I guess that's volume. We'll leave it at 5. That's volume. Okay, so the audio set's something completely different. Channel lock manual or auto. We'll leave it on manual. This is going to be one of those set it and forget it things, which means you're going to forget how to set it after you get it set. I would like for it to be a little bit more intuitive in the menu. Okay, so low TP was the temperature mode. Low temperature mode is off when the ambient temperature reaches minus 15 C. The internal heating system, <laughs> nice, activates, allowing the repeater to operate at minus 30 degrees Celsius. Wow. So we're on channel one. Channel one is 462.550 for transmit, 467.550 for receive, and the power is high and the bandwidth is wide and the sub audio is 136.5. So we gotta get a GMRS radio and we gotta set it up for that. All right, anything? Nope, nothing. All right, so I know what I did wrong. The repeater's face says transmit and receive. You have to switch that around in your radio. I knew that, but I didn't know that. Like I knew, it, I knew that it does that. I need to talk on the receive and receive on the talk, but I thought the talk and the receive were set up properly on the display to be what I needed to put in my radio. They're not. They're the opposite, now you know. So this is again 15 volts input power and then we're going to key up on a handheld through the repeater and we're gonna read the repeater's power level on its output. WRNY 966 testing. We got almost 19 watts out and 1.14 to one SWR. WRNY 996. 19 on the peak, love it. All right, so it's rated at 25 watts on the website. Why am I only seeing 19 watts on my setup? You saw my SWR wasn't one to one, so there's that. We've got coax losses and they also talk about going through the duplexer inside the box that I showed you earlier attenuates the signal a bit. So 25 watts from the radio transmitter through all of that nonsense to my meter, to my dummy load, is 19 watts. Am I making excuses for them? Not really. Some of that's true. Is it, what, is it six watts true? I don't know. That was 15 volts. Let's do the 12 volt test now. We've got the Dabson 600 power station. It gives me my cigarette lighter socket so I can plug it in. So we've got our 12 volts power going into the repeater. We've got our meter and our antenna that we used before. Let's see what we can do for power. WRNY 996 testing. We're getting 16 watts out, 16 watts out of the repeater at 12 volts input power. So we did a little bit of a tech out on the Redivis RT97L repeater. This is their third generation of this repeater. They've been making constant improvements. We've gotten more power. We've got low temperature protection. We've got high temperature protection. 15 volts in if you wanted, 12 volts in if you wanted. It's supposed to do 24, but I think there's probably a voltage regulator in there that's gonna buck that down to where it belongs so that you don't fry the internal components. I don't have a way of doing 24 volts power testing or else I would have done 24 volts power testing for you. I guess maybe I could rig up a set of batteries and well, yeah, maybe in a future video, we'll take care of that. For now, that's where this video is going to end. But coming up in the series, first off, I wanna know what you guys would like to see. But second, what we're gonna do, what I've got planned is solar panel, battery, and repeater. All of it needs to be weatherproof so that it can just sit outside and be forgotten about. Then I wanna do some hacking with that duplexer, see if we can make ourselves a nice clean 70 centimeter repeater with this and see how much farther we can, we can push it out. I also need to learn a lot about duplexers, which is gonna be fun for me to learn and fun for me to share with you all. And I totally forgot that I need to do some Raspberry Pi stuff with this also because it doesn't have a built-in repeater ID, which is okay if you're using it by yourself, but not for other people who are going through it. So we need to get a repeater ID on it. And I think there's also some remote shutdown, shut off stuff that we can do with the Raspberry Pi. Gonna be pretty fun. So be sure you're subscribed to see 
that right below the video there is a subscribe button totally free makes me happy when you click it i'd love to see that number go up below the subscribe button there are links down there where you can get some more information on this repeater if you are interested in the meantime there's a video right over here i think you'll enjoy next thanks for being awesome i'll see you over there